Hey guys, this little magic here, and it's time to start off a brand new series. I've been looking for like a series idea and wasn't really coming up with anything. I thought, hey, I really should do the one that everybody's been asking for, which is how to play MTG better. And then I realized that all the topics I wanted to cover actually sort of fall under a different umbrella. So we're sort of continuing that series, sort of not. This is about, instead of ways to play slightly better, it's ways to stop playing worse. Because honestly, all the tips and tricks in the world aren't going to help you if you're also doing negative things that are harming your play. So I'm going to start off with a video that just coincidentally also clears up the number one misconception that I hear about a lot of the videos on my channel. It's mostly just trolls, idiots, and perpetually angry people who tend to comment on this. So it's not like intelligent people who can't figure this out. Most of you probably already know this, which is why I didn't want to make this video, but apparently I do to get just the lowest common denominator off my back about this. And it's educational at the same time. So the very first topic for the very first video in this series is to stop practicing with your brand new deck idea the wrong way. Now there are really different chronological stages to testing a deck, and the first one we'll just say is you scribbling down the idea on a napkin at Denny's at 2 in the morning. Or like IHOP or whoever's open 24 hours, I don't remember. So you got your deck idea, and honestly if you're like me it's in Excel, not on a Denny's napkin. You should start doing some math on it. Make sure that if there's combos that they're mathematically reasonable to happen at least 80% of the time in a typical game. So you gotta calculate draw, scry, what turn you're gonna have the mana on, how much mana you're gonna need on a given turn, is just do all the math. If you don't know how, you are definitely going to want to watch my video on hypergeometric distribution. Honestly, if you type the word hypergeometric into the search on my channel, I bet it's probably only going to come up with one result. And I think we all know I'm way too lazy and forgetful to put a link in the description. So once the math is sound, I mean, because why would you honestly proxy it or test it on Xmage or, you know, go get the cards and build it if the math is not right, if it's unreasonable that your deck will actually work? So once you're like, okay, I think, you know, an 8-8 eight and eight combo is pretty reasonable to meet up with, which usually it is. Okay, now you got a solid deck idea, you kind of trim it down and think, okay, it's at 70 cards, got to get to 60. Okay, now you've got a real prototype, now it's time to test it. I strongly recommend just downloading Xmage. Uh, there's a couple alternatives, people always tell me about them, I haven't used anything other than Xmage, but I heard they're lovely. So build your deck and test, like, the virtual version of it first uh, before you buy it, because, you know... You're probably going to change it. And everybody loves 10 trips to the card shop to pick up just two more cards to tweak your deck just a little bit. So whether you build it in real life because you just have tons of cards, which that's fine, or if you build it in X-Mage because you're too cheap to have tons of cards, or honestly it's just easier to change your deck without re-sleeving it and reshuffling it, so it's, it's a superior way to test it, you should not right away say, oh, I'm going to go up against my next best deck. So, you know, you go grab your friend, throw your best standard deck at him, and then see if he can beat it. That's probably not a good idea unless you built a single purpose weapon deck, which I do all the time. Like when goblins were a big thing about, I don't know, a year and a half, two years ago, I just said I'm so sick of these damn goblin decks. I'm so sick of goblin tokens winning every single FNM. I'm going to bring a black kill deck. So I brought nothing but Bile Blight and just, oh my god, Virulent Plague I think was legal at the time. Drown in Sorrow, Fester Gloom, you name it, it was mass kill, and I won every single match against goblins. Now that deck, I would just go right up against goblins, because if it can't beat goblins, I don't care. But for a more typical deck where it's like, I'm doing what I'm doing, you're doing what you're doing, maybe I've got some control, some kill, some removal to stop you from doing what you're doing, but in general my deck actually does a thing, it has a strategy, and it's not like dependent on who I sit down across from. What you want to do is just see if the deck plays well, see if the interactions work correctly, see if all the combos work the way you thought, um, and make sure that, you know, your land ratio is pretty good. That you should be able to do just solely based on math, not by testing. But some cards might not work together as well as you thought, or there might be like a timing problem where you keep thinking, oh man, this all works, except this one card is a sorcery, and every single game I keep losing, or, well, realistically, like a one in five games I keep losing because it's a sorcery. I can't cast it in the middle of combat, and that's when I need to trigger prowess. You know, that's the kind of stuff that you really can't see on paper until you actually test the deck, but the least effective way to test a deck is up against an extremely strong tier one or two standard deck. That's just stupid. I mean, whenever I give this example to people in real life, I tell them it's like going up against a mill deck. Like, if you want to know if your deck wins or not, you test it against a mill deck. Well, 
turn eight, you, you got your whole library milled and you're dead. Great. You probably didn't even get to test your deck. I mean, other than the speed of your deck, you didn't get to test your deck. You just got milled. I mean, it's just a waste of a game and you got to reshuffle. For modern, it's like, oh, I, I built, uh, you know, some kind of resurrect from the graveyard undying persist deck. Okay, great. Let's see if it works. And then you go up against like Storm or Affinity and they win on turn four. In fact, Affinity usually wins on turn three from what I've seen. You didn't learn anything. You probably got like one creature, two lands out, and then you lost the game. It's just stupid. So what you should do is have a specific deck, and this I absolutely do do this myself, so I'm not just saying it's good advice. I actually do this. Have a deck that's just like life gain defenders, walls, just massive, massive, massive delay and defense, but with a reasonable amount of aggro. You know, maybe put in like eight flyers, eight giant like zero six, zero seven walls, maybe like four counter spells, and then like a couple like two one for one creatures or like two two for two creatures, you know, stuff you'd normally see, and just build the most generic cliche deck that's not just gonna run you over with some stupidly powerful combo. It'll just sit there and play the game for turn after turn after turn after turn and probably not win, but probably not just collapse and lose right away either. So what I always say is it's the exact opposite as going up against a glass cannon deck where it's like the, the combo goes off and then you're dead on turn three or four or it doesn't and then the deck just does nothing and you're basically playing against nobody. It's just like a undefended punching bag full of 20 life points that you just keep hitting because their combo failed. Or of course because they mulligan to like three which is what a lot of combo decks do. So you're building exactly the opposite of that. It's like the most slow, cautious, delay typical like low powered weak kind of deck and now i really shouldn't call it like a weak deck it's actually an incredibly strong deck in that it's really hard to beat that deck i mean i don't know if you guys have gone up against like a ultra high defender life gain life link you know deck before but they're not easy to beat so it's a good way to just go up against an opponent uh, i know what other people have told me is that they tend to test their new decks against another kind of blood deck but then they just give them 100 life points now obviously you can't do that in x mage um if you can do it in real life hey go for it but other than that i tend to just throw out monstrous sized defenders for like two and then just life linkers flyers just to make sure that your deck can deal with that because you might come across flyers and it's just kind of like a like a testing ground it's like a shooting gallery if this was like a first person shooter you know you make sure you can get the distant headshots the up close stuff make sure your mag size is good make sure your weapon loadout is you know comfortable but you wouldn't do that while there's a giant army of elite players shooting at you you should probably do it in the shooting gallery where it's you know <laughs> safe and representative of a game so hopefully you guys get the overall concept there. Um, I might throw up just a configuration for one of my uh, standard testing decks. Uh, what I usually do is I just have like a modern testing deck and then I test my standard decks against it and just set it on modern for the format. Kind of doesn't work so great when you have treasure crews in your deck, but um, I think X-Mage has something called Freeform where it's just everything goes. So now, of course, I have to revisit what I said at the beginning of this video. Some of the absolute dumbest people you'll ever meet, or just people trolling, or just people who want to make up a random insult and think that this sounds clever. They leave comments on my video saying, Hey, why are you testing this deck up against the AI in X-Mage? The AI's an idiot. Play it up against a real player. It's not really deck testing unless you go up against the best decks out there and there's a human driving it, and literally the exact opposite is true. First you design the deck, then you test the deck against like a dummy, either, you know, the X-Mage AI playing like a complete idiot, or the X-Mage AI playing with a highly defensive simplistic deck like I just outlined, or another human playing with a highly simplistic deck that I just outlined. You don't learn anything going up against an incredibly strong deck when you've never played your deck before that's just stupid it's just bad practice and you're not going to learn anything you're going to constantly think that your deck doesn't work when really you just need to refine it a little bit but you're not going to know how to refine it because you lost on like turn five because this ultimate super deck just ran you over with you know werewolves or vampires or allies or whatever now, just to speak specifically on that topic, people say, well, you're showing off that this deck is good because you're showing gameplay footage of you beating the computer. I could beat the computer with any deck because the computer is an idiot. Yes, it is, but I'm not showing off that the deck can win. I'm showing off how the deck works. I can't show off how the deck works while there's a human running affinity against me. That would be really stupid. 
In fact, that would just be showing off how Affinity dominates on turn three and four. So I'm not saying, hey, look at me winning three times in a row against the AI. This is the strongest deck ever. No, it's a video saying, here's how the cards interact. Here's what order you're supposed to put spells on the stack. Here's how long you're supposed to keep these particular spells in your hand. Here's when you're supposed to do everything. Here's when you're supposed to mulligan. I'm only showing off one deck. I'm not showing off a fight between two decks. And I don't know why some people don't get that. Whatever, you need at least a moderately okay IQ to play MTG, and apparently you need one to watch YouTube as well. Well, that's true for my channel, at least. There's plenty of uh, channels out there for really, really dumb people. Like people who have left that comment about, Oh my god, he only ever plays against the AI, what the hell, Meh. So hopefully that was not a shocking revelation now that I explained it. Hopefully all of you are just like, mm-hmm, I knew that. If it was and you're like, oh, that's why he uploads them. I get it now, dude. You are like beyond hope. Oh my gosh. Anyway, this video is dragging on, but uh, hopefully you guys get the gist of it. Always, always, always see if your deck works first, then test it against powerful decks and see if it works against powerful decks because it's got to work at all and then it has to work in the standard meta. Those are the two steps and they have to go in that order. So that's the tip of the day and watch out for a lot more of these videos because YouTube's uploader was kind of broken for a while so I've got a lot of uploading to do. So I will definitely see you guys next video.